Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video with your host, Andrew. Today, you join me for a review on the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Blue Green Nebula. Now, before we start the credits and the rest of this video, one quick little question for you. If you're a Sailor fan, what is your favorite Sailor pen? And please do leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your feedback on your favorite Sailor. If you're not a Sailor fan, let me know what Japanese um, pens you're interested in, because I am pretty much a Japanese convert these days. I mean, we have got some exceptions like De Leonardo's, which I absolutely adore, especially for the writing capabilities. But yeah, I'd really love to hear your thoughts and feelings. So let's roll the titles and crack on with this. Okay, so 22 light years in radius, a thousand light years away from Earth and located within the Milky Way system is the Nebula Reef, more commonly known as Bernard III. And that's basically what is serving for the inspiration for the pen inside this box. So let's head over to the table, have a look at it, and then I'll provide you an overview, a writing sample, size comparison, and then my final thoughts and feelings. So let's go over to the table. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so, the white balance is going to be ever so slightly off in this and unfortunately it won't show the actual true colours of this pen. So what I'll have to do today is I'm going to give you a link to my Instagram account and from there you'll be able to see the true green of this. For some reason the blues um, get a little bit uh, confused uh, with the camera. It's not much I can do with it. I can shift it to the greens which makes it more accurate for the greens unfortunately what happens is then my skin actually starts turning green so for the actual sake of having some uniformity i'm going to try and keep it as neutral as possible anyway so what we have here is the pro gear green nebula fountain pen and we've got a 14 karat gold zoom nib on here so let's just take the box out usual sailor affair although it's actually missing the newer branding, which Sailor has come out with. We should see that soon. Underneath, we have got the pen, and then we have got a pen pillow. Under that, we have got the converter, the care instruction guides, and the sleeve in which the pen sits on. So let's just put that back in for a second. Wonderful, and we'll take the pen out, and we'll go over to my face, where we'll have a closer look at the pen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first off, thank you for those who voted to see this pen. I did put a poll out on Instagram, and this was the pen which uh, you guys have chosen. And I have to say, it's a great choice. It's a beautiful pen, and I've had it for a few weeks now, and I am absolutely loving it. Okay, so let's go over the pen itself. Um, this is another limited edition pen from Sailor, Shock Horror. Sailor seem to be a company which come out with uh, limited editions, left, right and centre, and this is no exception, but it is presented at a really good price point. So this is about £156 with the Zoom Lib. You can have it for about £130 without, £130, £140. If you go to Colt Pens, you can score yourself 10% off with my discount code, which is PenFriendsUK10, and that will knock off a few quid for you. So yeah. Do go and check that out if you are interested. Okay, so 1,800 pieces on this pen. It's a limited edition, um, but 1,800 I think is a pretty good number to be honest. It gives everybody a, a chance to buy a pen which is of interest to them, and it comes in at a really good price point. So let's go over the parts of this pen, but before we actually do that, let's give you the size dimensions. Fantastic. Okay, so the Pro Gear Slim is essentially the flat top version of Sailor's lineup with the 1911, uh, which is the sort of more cigar shaped pens. I feel that the Pro Gears are a little bit more popular, um, primarily because you can do a few more fun things with the finials on these pens on some of the limited edition pens. Uh, for example, the Cocktail series had uh, different kind of finials on here and some of the store exclusives in Japan also have different logos. Some can even come with Raden, which is very, very pretty. Okay, so let's look at this pen closer up. So on the top, we have got the anchor, which is the logo for Sailor. Comes onto this lovely ring clip, which is very practical, fits into a shirt pocket with great ease, as you can see. 
we've got this translucent green blue nebula finish with sparkles in there which is supposed to be representing the stars I'm guessing we've then got a center ring with a thinner outer center ring and then on there we've got sailor founded 1911 comes down onto the main body where we've got more of that translucent material which allows you to see the cartridge converter and actually some of your ink capacity on the inside comes down to the bottom and then we've got no unscrewing mechanism on the bottom but we do have a nice little gold ring and I just like the trim on this pen I, I, I like how it sort of divides up the pen a little bit underneath we are presented with a 14 karat gold zoom nib in gold and then we have got a plastic feed very comfortable section it's quite straight actually and it sort of leads on to the threads of the pen which then has a very mild step up onto the body so you can hold it pretty much anywhere you want to find a comfy position and the fact that you can actually post this pen and being a smaller pen I would certainly recommend doing so especially if you've got larger hands it does make it into a very comfortable writing experience okay underneath the actual barrel we are presented with a cartridge converter which is supplied with the pen I believe actually um, in Japan they're not actually supplied with a cartridge converter that's primarily because cartridges in Japan apparently are more popular and I've also managed to get a bit of ink on my fingers at the same time yay that will teach me not to clean the pen properly but it is a beautiful ink and you're going to really love this in the writing sample in a moment so let's just give it a final little turn and then you can actually see this in all of its glory okay so let's move on to doing the writing sample we'll do a size comparison and then my final thoughts and feelings okay ladies and gentlemen so we've got the sailor pro gear blue green nebula here and we've got the zoom nib which is the first time I've actually used a really broad nib so this is going to be quite an interesting writing sample for myself today I hope you guys enjoy it I'm going to write in um, how you would normally write but then I'm going to also show you later on how the variance of holding the pen at different angles actually affects the pen so we have got the sailor Pro gear. And you're going to really love this ink today. It is magic, this ink. Really, really magical. So, this ink in here is a Tasha ink. And I did a review, well, not a review on it, but I had it inked up with my Namiki. That's it. <laughs> my Namiki. I was uh, almost forgetting words then. So, this is Sailor Pro Gear Slim. blue, green and you'll notice that my handwriting is quite big today just partly because this is such a broad nib and it's not something which I'm used to writing with now you may see um, in a second I'm just going to do on an ink sample how it's sort of fading from blue into green and I thought this is such a, a wonderful ink to pair it with so let's write it down Tasha, Sabi, Midori, which I think that is a lowercase. Uh, apologies about that. Anyway, really beautiful ink. Let's write out the quick bound fox.
Okay, um, we also forgot to write down it's a 14 karat gold nib, so let's put that in before I forget. Wonderful. And you can actually see a real difference, actually, as it sort of fades from that beautiful blue into like this sort of greeny colour. And in fact, what I'm going to do later, I'm going to uh, scan this in or scan something in and then post it on my Instagram so you can see a writing sample with this incredible, incredible ink. In fact, actually, you can just see just down here just how incredible the shading is just between some of the lighter parts and the darker parts. Wonderful. Okay, so the zoom nib. Let's have a look at some of the line variation in which you can get with this pen. So we're going to start off how we would normally write, okay, which is for me quite slanted. It comes up and as you alter the nib, the thinner the line will get. Now, I am led to understand that this isn't as necessary as pronounced as some of the classic uh, nibs which you could have got from Sailor, but it is a wonderful, wonderful nib nonetheless. And being a zoom nib, you can also go onto the reverse and you get like an extra, extra fine line. So you get quite a lot of variance, uh, which is really useful. Okay, so this is where things are going to get a little bit more fun in seeing how this actual ink works. So I'm going to do a few little lines. And um, as you can see, hopefully, as it dries, we're starting to see some of the greens coming through. We've still got some of the blues in here. Hopefully you can see this. If you can't, I do apologize. And I will, as I say, post on Instagram this incredible ink. Now, I've used this ink on various papers and on this Midori, it really, really shines. I've tried it on Tomoe River and I've tried it on Cosmo Air Light, but what I've found is on both of those papers, it doesn't share the same sort of quality of this sort of like dual shading, which is quite interesting. And I'd actually quite liken this ink very similarly to some of the Tono and Ling's Kaleidoscope inks. So I might have to get some of that ink and do some ink comparisons at some stage. Okay, so let's see if there's any line variation with this. Well, you can press down on the nib and squeeze out quite a thick line, as you can see. And hopefully, yeah, I think you can see possibly the blues even better on that. Fantastic. But I certainly wouldn't recommend um, trying to flex this nib. You will probably spring it. And I will write down reverse, just because you can. So yeah, it's not scratchy, really great. And I bought this primarily so that uh, for shading in large areas of my artwork, I would have something which would potentially give me the opportunity to be able to have a very versatile nib. Okay, right, so let's move over to doing a size comparison next. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so from left to right, we've got the Sailor Pro Gear Blue Green Nebula, and that's in the Pro Gear Slim size. We've got the Pelican M200 Gold Swirls. We've got a Twisby Go, which is hand painted by myself. Then we've got a Leonardo Offertuna Italiano Memento Zero, and that's in the Blue Hawaii. And then we have got a Lamy Safari and yellow on the end. So it is quite a small pen in comparison to the rest of the other pens. I'd say the Memento Zero and the Lamy are more standard in size. So it's definitely on the slimmer size. So let's just move these out of the way because the M200 and the Pro Gear Slim are actually not too dissimilar, actually visually. The M200 is slightly girthier, I would say, but let's have a look at these uncapped because this is where things get a little bit more interesting so uncapped the m200 is a good few millimeters longer so if you're a person who doesn't like posting their caps the m200 is possibly going to be the pen to go for out of the the two but if you don't mind posting 
because the M200 posts quite shallowly, so quite deeply, I should say, and the Progia Slim posts quite um, shallow, it actually makes the pens quite similar in length, which I think is quite interesting. Um, but certainly in terms of the section, um, it is slightly bigger on the M200. So that's the size comparison. Let's go over to my face and we will have a final thoughts on this pen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with me so far. Right, so let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the pen. Who's it for and who's it not for? So let's start with who's it for and who's it not for. Anyone who likes a pen which has got a bit of sparkle, you're gonna absolutely love it. And the same could be said for those who aren't going to enjoy this. If you don't like sparkles, stay well clear of this pen, okay? <laughs> it's, obviously these are kind of aesthetical um, choices, but you might also want to consider the actual size of the pen. This is a smaller pen, and therefore some people aren't going to get on particularly well with the size of this. I get on okay with it. I mean, I've got medium sized hands, I would say, and it's very comfortable to write with, I find, and certainly it is a, a great drawing pen as well. I love the zoom nib on it, um, although it may not be as good as perhaps some of the, the classic zoom nibs which were out there. It is still very practical, and as an artist, I find that I can actually shade with it, um, you know, perfectly well. I've left this actually purposely for two weeks um, to see how well it can actually cope with writing first time, and it is absolutely fine. I'm glad to be using the pen again, but I do like to try and leave the pens a little time just to see how they cope with any sort of drying out issues and if there's any air gaps in the pen. But I can report to you that this pen is flawless and every single sailor I've used has performed absolutely fantastically in that department. Okay, so to sum that up, if you like sparkly pens, go for it. If you don't, stay clear of it. If you don't like small pens, obviously you might want to consider the standard line or the large line. And so what do I think about the pen? Okay, so I, I personally love it. I love sparkles, I love space. And I think the marriage of the sparkles and this blue-green is absolutely fantastic. Although if I was being hypercritical, I know that uh, Pilot, sorry, I know that Sailor, not Pilot, they do some sort of more opaque pens where you get some sort of semi-translucency semi -translucency going down to the bottom. I'd have liked to maybe have seen this one in that sort of realm where we have some sort of like darker material so that the sparkles could really shine, but still retaining some of that blue green. And then as it sort of gets down, uh, we get to a lighter green. And I think actually when you start looking at the pictures of the Reef Nebula, which I showed you earlier, that would have been in more keeping to this pen. But that's not to say that they won't try that in the future. I doubt very much sailors watching this video, but if by a million and one chance that they are, and they do listen to this feedback, I would love, love, love to see them actually produce a more opaque pen. It becomes a bit more uh, semi-translucent down to the end and then have this lovely concentration of sparkles going in there. That would be absolutely fantastic. In fact, actually, what I might consider doing in the future is getting a, an Arushi pen in Midori Tamanuri and getting some Raden put in there. And that would be then my sort of Reef Nebula sort of take on things. I think that would be quite fun to do. So that really leaves it for today's video. I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who watches the videos. Even if you don't comment or like, thank you for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. You all may, may have noticed now that I've uh, monetized on this channel. So thank you for those who've watched the channel to a point where I can now hopefully afford to actually pay for some more pens and inks and some interesting things as well going down the lines. I'd really love to be able to give you more options on what you want to see reviewed. And if you have got some pens which you'd like to see reviewed, please do leave them in the comments section below or reach out to me on Instagram and say, hey, Andrew, would you mind uh, reviewing this pen? Um, Colt Pens have been very generous in loaning me two pens for review for next week. And if there's something from Colt Pens which you wouldn't mind seeing reviewed within reason, I don't think they're gonna loan me 4,000 pound pens, but if there's something, um, as I say, in a reasonable price bracket which you would like to see reviewed, do reach out to me because I can always ask and 
I would love to be able to fulfill some of your sort of requests. So that really leaves it as I say for today. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for another video next week. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.